this lesson of this quick start tutorial in V-Ray for Cinema 4D, we will cover lighting interiors in two parts. You can download the scene from the link below and follow along. Let's start by setting up the correct camera view using a V-Ray physical camera from the V-Ray drop-down menu. By clicking this little white icon beside the camera, we will be instantly looking through the lens of the camera. I will lock the camera using a protection tag from the Cinema 4D Tags menu and move the camera at the bottom of the hierarchy to keep my file organized. Next, I will use a V-Ray Sun to light up the scene from the V-Ray drop-down menu. V-Ray will automatically assign a target to the Sun in order to better control the light direction. The Sun and Sky in V-Ray are a system that work together. If you move the Sun up and down, the sky color will change accordingly. I will move the sun and the target to the bottom of the scene to keep a clean file hierarchy. In order to optimize and speed up the render process of this interior space, I will go ahead and place light portals in front of every window and every opening. To create a portal light, click on the V-Ray drop-down menu and select a V-Ray rectangular light. Place this light in the right place in front of every window. Let's change the type of light to portal light. To keep my file organized, I will group this light so that each copy of this light will be placed inside the same group. Let's go and change the camera parameters to prepare for rendering. I will change the film ISO to 200, the f-stop to 2 to allow for a nice depth of field later when we switch on the depth of field option. I will change the shutter speed to 400 to counterbalance the brightness of the f-stop. I will now switch on V-Ray and the V-Ray frame buffer in the render settings and do a test render. The image is well lit, but I would like the sun to come inside from the right side of the screen. Let's look at the model from the top. I will hide the light portal's geometry so that I can see better in which direction the sun is pointing. I will also lower the sun to allow for some long shadows inside the room. Let's test render one more time. The image is slightly dark, so I will bump up the ISO in the camera to 400. Also, the shadow generated by the sun are very sharp. To make them softer, I will increase the sun size to 10 in the light parameters and I will lower the sun strength by turning down the intensity multiplier to 50%. In real life, you do not have the chance to change the intensity of the sun, but in CG, you can tweak everything you want. Let's test render one more time. The image is now perfectly lit, but it lacks depth. The elements on the right are just as in focus as the element on the left, which are more distant. I will select the camera and move the focus point onto the element I would like to be in focus. Then in the sampling parameters of the V-Ray camera, I will switch on the depth of field by ticking this box that says DOF. I will adjust the subdivisions to 60 to allow for better quality. Since rendering depth of field might require additional time, I will change the threshold level in the anti-aliasing tab in the render settings to something like 0.002 and turn the max rendering time tab down to 0 to allow for the rendering to run as long as it takes to reach a higher quality image. Now I can render a final version and use the V-Ray post-production tools to tune the final look of the image. Now that the final image is ready, we can go to the Exposure tab and lower the highlight burn to bring back some of the geometry details which might have been overexposed. I will adjust the contrast to balance the effect and I will use the white balance to change the image by making it either colder or warmer. And I will use the curve adjustment to tune the final look. In the next part, I will show you how to render the same image using a dome light and an HDRI image instead. In this part of this V-Ray for Cinema 4D tutorial, we will cover how to light up an interior day scene using an HDRI image inside of a dome light. We will start from where we left off, from the previous exercise. You can download the same scene in the link below in the video description. Let's deactivate the sunlight completely and let's add a V-Ray area dome light from the drop-down menu. In the area light options, 
I will turn on the spherical dome option as well as use a texture. In the texture slot I will add the V-Ray Advanced Bitmap. Click the V-Ray icon and add the texture sun.hdr included with the file. With the light selected I will navigate outside of the scene to see in which direction the sun of the HDRI is pointing. Hide in the viewport the plane surrounding the house to have a better view. To show the HDRI I will use the dome light texture viewer in the workflow tab of V-Ray. Click on preview texture and adjust the exposure and resolution to fit your needs. The sun is pointing in this direction so I will turn the dome light 90 degrees to allow for the light to come in from the side window. Now I can close the dome light texture viewer and test render. The image is well lit. The advantage of using HDRI lights is that it can provide you with a rich and more realistic light information for your scene. The only thing I would like to change is to make the shadows more defined. To do so, let's go inside the texture tab of the dome light and let's change the gamma value down to 0.8. This will require for us to have to adjust the HDRI image exposure to something like minus 2 to compensate. And then we will have to change the camera exposure values for the ISO and the shutter speed. A value of 200 in each slot will do the trick. The image is now ready. I will use the exposure control to tune the final look like shown in the previous example. In the next part of this tutorial, we'll cover lighting the same scene at night.